gets help in your business. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Outer Bell Podcast. I am Patrick, and you all know my friends. Silly. Buttermilk. Eric. Jerry. Hey, we have our special guest in the house tonight, Mr. and Mrs. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You're not wrong. <laughs> oh, and Jimmy, her husband. Her Kelly's, husband. husband. Kelly's, Kelly's husband. husband. <laughs> Kelly's husband. Better known as. Uh, better known as Mr. Jimmy. Um, Mr. Jimmy, isn't that a, like an old Bond reference or something? Like, Mr. Jimmy, like... Won't take it to the cleaners or something. No, oh. idea. it sounds like something like that. Mr. Jimmy sounds familiar, super familiar. You're a fact checker. Like you're a fact checker can Google that real quick. Okay, <laughs> so right. for ABC. So, um, what uh, the one with the black blacklist, Mr. M- Mr. T. No, what was her name? No, that was Mr. Um, she was a woman, and she her? was she was the cleaner. Mr. Kaplan. Yes, Mr. Kaplan. Oh. I have That's no idea blacklist. what you're talking about. That was on Blacklist. Show. Great show. I've never seen the show. Anyway, sorry. <coughs> Squirrel. It was, Squirrel. Good. it was good for a while, so they just kind of went off the rails with yeah. some crazy. Yeah. Out there well, stuff. that's like uh, like uh, like that other show that was uh, really good for a while and went crazy. Um, all of them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Tends I think, to happen. I think Seinfeld was right when he got off TV when he did. It's like if you stay in too long, your show just falls apart. I mean. Look at Friends. It went past the first season and just <laughs> fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> it took it a while. Well, welcome everybody to the show. We do have Mr. and Mrs. Uh, McDonald up in the house. Uh, Kelly, as you all know, she's been here on the podcast before. Uh, she is our uh, fleet manager for uh, well, the whole fleet, but she specializes on the FedEx custom critical side. And then Jimmy, her husband, runs the maintenance department. How are you all doing and how was your trip up here? It was good. It was good. On the way up. It's been nice there. Yes, it always is. Yeah. It's like pulling teeth. Yeah, yeah it was like no She's also part of there. the Expedite Chicks as well. Some people yeah, may have seen true. her there. Jimmy's been on the show before, too, though. I do remember. We were on. We were up here before. How soon they forget? How I know. How soon they forget? How soon they forget? Baby, three years must ago. must have been memorable. Mm-hmm. It hasn't been three years. It's been something. It's been three seasons. We're on thir- our third season. Who has mm. their phone on? Not me. Uh-oh. It's because it's him. I'm on theater mode, but he is oh, allowed to come through. Oh, he was fact checking. checking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was fact checking. Sorry. He's not discriminating. So see, he's checking everybody. Did everybody know who our fact checker is? By the way, I mean we've referenced him like twice. Yeah. So, so our our fact yeah, checker is yeah. back in the house. It's Mr. Don Juan. Yeah. Uh, he uh, also from Highfield Maintenance fame. Yeah. We don't tell yeah. everybody all that. No. Keep that on the dizzle, but uh, we it's try right. getting him on here, and he refuses. We so. prefer to call him Baker Don, right? Yes. Yes. Baker Don. Yes. He yes. he's he's the one that equips our green room when we go live, like, very occasionally. <laughs> or not our green room. I'm sorry, Expedite Boogie's green room. Yes. Yes. And also the uh, green room for the interview Highfield. Highfield interviews. We have a green room. Yeah. yeah. Since when? Since every time I do an interview. <laughs> Are you shipping goods? Oh, you out? don't mean outer belt. You mean okay. Now I'm on. Now I get it. Boy, I am slow today. That's okay. I'm kind of off my rocker. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Last night, as I was asleep, I woke up. Something freaked me out. I woke up and I bit my tongue. And it hurts like you wouldn't believe. So I'm a little off my game. I'm trying not to slur too much, but my tongue feels like it's huge, and. uh Hurts quite bad. Well, you took a big stressful test today, too, I understand. I did take a big stressful test. Yes. I am now permitted to ride a motorcycle in a classroom setting. Nice. Oddly specific, but... Well, um, well, well, hold, <laughs> hold on. Ride or drive? Ride. Ride. It's not driving. So you cannot drive yet. I you cannot can't ri- drive a motorcycle yet. You're not allowed to drive. There's no such thing as driving motorcycles. It's very confusing. But you can ride one? You, anybody you have, can ride one. You have to take a test to ride a motorcycle? He's saying that they don't equ- call it driving a motorcycle. It's called yes. riding a motorcycle, period. Ah. means by virtue of it being a motorcycle, you're driving it. I know. Okay. It's ridiculous. The, the weird. whole time I'm like reading through the manual and they're like, um, when you're riding a motorcycle and X, Y, or Z, then you should use both brakes. And I'm like, as a rider, I don't think I should have access to the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, is this like an old-timey coal train where I'm the brakeman in the back of the bike mm-hmm. and then, you know, Vince is up front, just zoom, zoom, like... I don't know. 
You think I could ride on the back of your bike? Like when, and reach the handlebars and the, no, the, I mean, the controls? <laughs> no, I mean like probably not. Like just wrap around and both of us on the bike. No, my bike's too small for that. Do bikes have weight limits? Yes, I yes, never thought about they that. They do. Yes, they do. Oh, they do. That wasn't in the manual. Of course it was, and I passed that part of the <laughs> test just fine. <laughs> no, so the test really threw me off. It was uh, quite confusing. So they said, read. In full fairness, they did disclose this, but they said read the Ohio State. Uh, driving manual and then read this motorcycle manual and i'm like i've been driving for a long time and i'm a great driver and i've only totaled one vehicle um and so i just read the motorcycle manual and called it good well lo and behold i get there and all the questions like not all the questions but half the questions are just driving questions like what does this orange uh try or uh, uh, uh diamond plate uh, diamond edge Diamond sign? What do they call that? A sign on point? I don't know. What does it mean? It's like oh, octagon. Square. It's a diamond. But a diamond, like diamond. Oh, okay. And it's like, well, it's road construction. Like, I know that. But then there was these, like, rules that were oddly specific to Ohio. Probably because I'm in Ohio. And um, I'm like, I have no idea. Like, <laughs> Oh, no. Like, I'm like in Louisiana. Because th there's, like, insurance <laughs> questions. But it's based on the damage done to the vehicle in the event of an accident as to if insurance has to be presented and stuff. So I said, like, all the time. And that's the wrong answer. In Louisiana, it's all the time. If you get pulled over, if anything happens, you have to present your insurance. And apparently here, it's $400. So if the damage is less than $400, you don't have to present it. What, are you getting your insurance yeah, adjuster out there on right the there on site? <laughs> right. You know. You, you know. You know how you, you don't keep... Here's what I think. You don't keep your pockets... Uh, State Farm guy in the... Which uh, you couldn't because that would be... Pr Jake. Right. Yeah. That wouldn't work either because then you're proving you have insurance. But still, it was very strange. A lot of things like that. Um, I got more questions wrong than I would like to admit. They were silly stuff. None of it was about riding. Everything that involved riding the bike, I got fine. But like there was one that was like, okay, if you're riding a bike with a minor on your back... Which will never happen for me. But if you are, what do you have to have? What does the minor have to have? A car a helmet? seat. A helmet. A helmet. I'm kidding. I'm like, duh, <laughs> of course a helmet. So I select helmet. Nay, nay. Oh. I have to have a helmet, foot pegs, and a seat back. Like, how would I know that? So it was multiple. Was so it in the book? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's probably how you know it. And coming from Louisiana, there was a period in time when you didn't even have to have a helmet as the rider so on a motorcycle. You don't. A while back. Ohio, Ohio does not require you to have a helmet. Just That's a minor. Just minors do. Okay. So if you're under the age of 18, you have to have a helmet on a bike. If you're riding it as the driver or if you're riding it as the passenger, that gets weird. Uh, it, it seems weird, though, that specifically a minor has to wear a helmet. I mean, does he have to have light on the front still? Does he have to carry his pickaxe with him? <laughs> I, I, I'm, just, I'm just having a hard time understanding depends why. On, depends on if you're driving him to work or not. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Uh, but why a minor? He does have to whistle all the way, <laughs> all the way to, to work. work. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's and one then of while he works. That's one of the, uh, yeah. you know, because there's nothing like riding a bike with your passenger just whistling. Right in your ear. Uh, right in your yeah. ear the whole way. Yeah. And you're like, how do I turn this calm off? Uh, now, I, uh, yeah, so I'm excited. I get to start, um, got two weeks, and then I'll start my actual on-the-bike riding class, and can't wait. Y'all are all motorcycle riders, and I'm the only one who's not. Jerry, what about you? Are no, you ever? I'm not. Never? I've ridden on one with my brother, but. Ever have a desire? Uh, sometimes, but. I, I don't have my endorsement. I ride on the back of his. I, I plan to get one, but I don't currently. Okay. Same shoes. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, can't wait for y'all to come up to the North Georgia mountains and see what's in our backyard. Come up to them? Down. Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> Over. Higher elevation. Come up to the mountains. Yeah, that's, that saying come up to, that's uh, uh, that's from being down south. Like, True. down, you know, like I used to live in Louisiana, and we were going up to do anything. You know what I mean? Like, unless it was going to southern Florida, which we never went to, you were going up to something. You are going up to Dallas, or we are going up to... Uh, Alabama, we're going up to Mississippi or Memphis or where I don't know where else we'd go, but like everything was that kind of way. Makes sense. No. Huh? New Orleans. That's down in two different dimensions. <laughs> <laughs> well, how um, exciting. Congratulations on passing. Yeah. 
Well, I'm excited to, uh, yeah, I am excited to do it. I, now we got to go clothes shopping, apparently. I got to buy. Mm, go to um, Iron a, Pony trip. Yep. Got to buy an Iron Pony. Oh, a little one. Hood ornament. And um, I have to get, I guess, riding gear and a jacket and a helmet. That probably would be good. So you do have to wear a helmet for the first year. I did, I did see that. So I as suggest a, you wear a helmet all the time. Oh, yeah, I plan on it. But I'm just saying, like, they do require. So it's just, it's miners with their pickaxes. And doesn't a pickaxe sound like a terrible thing to have on a bike? It does. That's why I was curious about it. <laughs> it's kind of dangerous. Yeah. Uh, and first year uh, riders. So have to wear the helmet. Have to wear a helmet. And then after that, that baby can. But you do have to have eyewear, right? Without a helmet? Yes, at all times. Yes. Yeah. Uh,. I have these really cool glasses from Harley Davidson that I got years ago when Eric and I went uh, with the Crafty Truckers. Do you remember them, the old Jason and Heather mm -hmm. Crafty Truckers? We went out to Yellowstone and to uh, Rapid City, and uh, they rented us uh, these, I guess they're called like side-by-sides, but they go yep. f really fast. They're not like the, I was thinking side-by-sides like a mule that, you know, goes maybe 20 miles an hour, and you throw stuff in the back of the bed and, you know use it for a farm but no these things went like stupid fast and we were tearing up trails and getting all muddy and it was a blast well as soon as we got in it we started going eric had his glasses on and i had nothing on and i mean i had to just like look straight down until we could get to town so i could buy some sunglasses because the wind was just killing me i was like i had no idea like 30 miles an hour with no windshield no you know our helmets did we even have helmets i don't think we had helmets with those you had seat belts, probably had five point harnesses, something like that. Yep. And then um, we got to Harley Davidson. That was the only store that we could find like any kind of sunglasses at. And so the sunglasses are like goggles. They have like this foam padding goes around the eyes. Ah, they're amazing. So I plan on using those too when I ride. Jimmy has a pair of those. Yep, I got a pair. They were super expensive, but nice. Everything at Harley is super expensive. Yeah. Have you priced the bikes? Yes, we own a Harley. Stupid expensive. Stupid <laughs> expensive. Stupid yeah. expensive. But um, even the clothing and stuff—it's crazy. They don't have a five dollars souvenir shirt rack. No. They don't have a fifty-five dollars souvenir <laughs> shirt. <laughs> shirt rack, I mean, <laughs> that's what you're going to drop in there on any T-shirt. I've never. Uh, I've never. The glasses are the only thing I ever bought at a Harley Davidson place. So. Poke um, chip. That's about the only thing you get for free. Have you all been to Iron Pony here in Columbus? No. When you've mm -hmm. ever been around? No. No travels? So it's not Harley. It's like all makes or what? How do they call it? Just a bike it store? This is a my motorcycle superstore of some sort. It just kind of all brands. What would you call it, Vince? Kind of like a, I'm not going to call it an outlet mall, but it, it does have all the brands, all the clothing just a brands. Cycle shop, it's a basically. cycle shop. Yeah. What do you call Iron Pony? Cycle shop? Yeah, it's a cycle shop. Are they doing it's, any? It's, it's a multi brand dealership. So they do sell brand new bikes. Okay, but they sell. They, they're not just a single brand like a Harley dealership. They sell um, Ducatis, Triumphs, um, Indian. Gotcha. So they're, they're they're like one of the major dealerships in our area. There aren't very many around here. No, and they've so got the dirt bike. So you know, like Yamaha dirt bike. Yeah. You know, they've got those kind of clothing in one. They've got the children and women's. They've got the men's, but then they've got you know, that upscale, like the Ducati or the the Super Racer bikes or whatever those yeah. kind of things are, you know. Um, Is this an ad for Iron Pony? I know, Sounds right? Like and then they've got parts. Well, if you use our discount code. Yeah. I know. They've got, <laughs> they've they've got, got a parts <laughs> department. They've got everything you need for riding everything. for all types of riding. Scooters, motorcycles. Well, your accessories are different for whatever type of bike you're well, on. Exactly. It, yeah. it you have different yeah. equipment, different sure. accessories, different oh, yeah. everything. Yeah. That's a pretty yeah. cool store. They also sell... Um, What's the side by side? That's the three wheeler, not a side by side. A can am. A can. They also sell can yeah. ams and the spiders. So they they're, they're a, a multi brand dealership. I know when you can uh, spend hours hours there. <coughs> when I first went to um, and thousands. Yes. When I first went to get into motorcycles back in college, years and years and years ago, um, there was a Honda dealership, and I I wanted a Honda. Like I'm like eh, Honda's a great bike. A guy three doors down had a. Um, going and i'm like honda just seems like the way to go they seem super reliable yada 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 
So I'm like, all right, I'll get a Rebel, get started on that bike, and then we'll go from there. And uh, I get to the place. Uh, there was a Honda dealership in Baton Rouge. It's been there for since, like, Honda came over originally. They're one of the first dealerships. It's way downtown. It's not in the best area. So we go down there, and it's a huge, huge place. And they actually do all the uh, the distribution for the area, too. So, like, if you go to a Honda dealership 100 miles from there, they got their bike from this distributor. And so uh, go there, and the guys, I'm talking to him, tell him what I'm thinking about doing. I was going to take the Harley-Davidson course and all this stuff, and here's what I'm thinking. This is the bike I'm kind of interested in. He's like, let me bring you over here and let you sit on one and see what you think. He's like, I'm not sure you're going to like it. And so I did. I walked over there, and I sat on the bike, and I felt cramped. I felt like I was trying to ride uh, an old BMX bike. You know, because I was a bicyclist, so I, I going down to like an old BMX bike, just being like, you know, cramped up on it, and I'm like, oh yeah, this does seem like it would be miserable after an hour of riding. Um, and so I didn't realize then they were a Suzuki Kawasaki, I think maybe Indian and a couple others um, that they also sold. Um, so he brought me over and put me on a Suzuki, which I was like, I don't want a Suzuki. I think they're kind of cheap. They're not great cars, so they can't be great bikes. That kind of logic. <laughs> and uh, I sat on a boulevard, and, I mean, it was like just putting on a, a nicely foot fit leather glove. It just was really comfortable. So I'm kind of curious now. I mean, obviously, I'm not the same body physique I was in college. What am I going to like? Where do I want the pedals to be at? That kind of thing. We call those controls. Pe- controls? Yeah, we don't call them pedals. We call them controls. What do you call the the things up on the controls controls Pit- hmm. there's nothing pedal footboards or floorboards you don't call them pedals you don't you don't like no you put your foot on the footboard you, you don't you have a dab do <laughs> 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 i have so much to learn okay you will well uh, are they f- f- what did you call them floorboards floorboards or footboards but Wait. on the back for a rider, foot pegs. The other kind of rider, well, their foot pegs. Well, she's well got, you might she's have got floorboards. You too. might have floorboards yeah, out there too. So our sense. bike, our bike doesn't have foot, uh, floorboards. Our no, mine's are pegs. Our, our bike yeah. has pegs. I did see on the front of a Gullwing, and this might be what you're talking about. You know, the Gullwing has a, a huge engine, but they have like floorboards definitely coming mm-hmm. out from those. Uh, parquet, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. Tile. Yeah, only, tiles. Only yes, <laughs> it's so much ceramic. <laughs> um, the drywall was weird. Anyways, um, and then one guy had pegs kind of sticking out from his engine. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, man, to stick your legs out like that to be able to use them seems extremely uncomfortable. Well, they were probably highway pegs. They yes. weren't functional. They're there to be comfortable. Yeah, they're, they're the there highway. so when you're on the highway, you, you kick your feet up out. and just relax. I got gotcha. you. You're not controlling anything there. There's no controls up there. And that kind of bike probably has the linked brakes and everything, right, where you don't really need your A gold brake. ring would, yeah. yeah. I don't know that Harley does link, bra- link brakes. I don't think so. Oh. Well, not the one I got. I got, <laughs> a, I got a 2011 Electric Glide Ultra Classic. It's nice, but it's not, you know, latest, greatest. I tell you one thing that surprised me was I always thought, and I know people are like, "Why are we talking about motorcycles?" Uh, but the um, transportation—that's what we talk about. Exactly, it's exactly right. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the there's a lot of people. I was reading reviews and checking out the Goldwing because in my mind it's like maybe one day, right? It's a dream for years from now. A lot of them were comparing them to the Harley, whatever the big Harley is, and the big Harley on a lot of the reviews won out. Like I thought the. That, that in my mind, the Gullwing's kind of the end-all, be-all, but I guess whatever that Harley-Davidson one is, people just brag about how great it is. And, it, and it, I mean, to be clear, they're not, like, talking about the, the engine or anything. They're talking about how soft the suspension is. They're talking about how big the LCD screen is on the inside, how good the stereo is. Like, they're not talking about the motorcycle features. They're right. talking about the creature comforts. Right. Uh, but so it's weird hearing people talk about Harley in that perspective because my version of Harley – is what we saw when we went camping a few years, a few months ago, and uh, they were doing the rat rods, and it was like, oh yeah, I've got a 1973 handlebars oh, yeah. with my yeah. uh, Harley Davidson frame from whatever. That's Choppers. what I'm used to. Hardtails, you know. I, that's kind of what I was thinking of when I think of Harley. I think of like that kind of spirit. So yeah, th- and those things are total rat rods. They they had they were pretty cobbled cool. together parts from everywhere to make mm-hmm. their bikes. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. And you know they they usually make them themselves. That's the cool part oh, about these guys. Oh, these, guys, right? did. Right? these guys had. They're doing it all themselves. They're not taking yeah. it. So yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, you know, so cool. They had a like, Mr. T van following them with all the gear. Yeah. So, yeah, they had, because we were wondering, like, they got ready to leave, and it was like. A team, you were? A team? Yeah. Mr. T, right? That's A team. Yeah. Yeah. He drove it. Yeah. 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 So I'm like, yeah, I oh, think. I guess it is. Okay, whatever. So I'm thinking, like, Where's all their, like, did they just leave all their trash and all their stuff or whatever? So I walked over there. No, it was all clean. And they're all leaving or whatever. And it was, oh, yeah, they just put everything in a van. I never thought about having a follow van. Like, that never (laughs) occurred to me. But the van fit the the rat rods. Their their clothing was kind of era or timepiece-like. Like, they they were embracing late 70s, early 80s. I I wasn't crazy off with the Mr. T van. No. No, I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't as nice the as a women, Mr. T van, but the it, yeah. women were dressed very seventies, you know, yep. kind of hippie, bell bottomy. Um, it was they were very neat people. Yeah, no tents, cool. no tents. So they, they were just, camping under the stars. Yeah, camping on the stars. That's cool. It was very cool. They're yeah. super nice people too. I mean, I could see like when it we first walked over there, I'm like, oh, this could go because they caught something on fire. They caught their pants on fire. Their pants. The, yeah, 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 one guy ripped his pants. He was trying so to they, dry his pants or something. Yeah, and <laughs> it, it, it like burns. So they just they're like, oh, the heck with it. They threw it in the fire, and that leather burns like bright. So we were freaked out. What's going on over there? And uh, but again, they ended up being just the nicest people in the world. Just yeah. Cool. Now we know why they have a follow van. Right. They didn't have any tents. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Bad weather. Well, and they were in the A team van. They yeah. they had ridden yeah. from Michigan, I think it was. They were on a very long ride. They were a very yeah. long ride, so yeah. It was so funny too because they said hard tails or whatever, and Vince is like, "Ooh," <laughs> and the girls were like, "It's killing us." <laughs> yeah. And even the guys were like, "Yeah, we had to stop after yeah. so many miles. It's just brutal." And I'm like, why would you do that? Why would you? It looks cool, but motorcycle motorcycle enthusiasts. Oof. Oh, very much. That, that's yeah. that's the only reason yeah. we have the second bike. They're Trying enthusiasts. to even go an hour on the first bike, I couldn't do it. I just it's murder. And I told him, anytime we're going anywhere now, I have a back. I have to be able to sit back, arms, the whole nine yards. Yeah, that makes everything doable for any long trips. I tell you, it would be nice. Um, I saw it in some of the old World War II mu- uh, movies. Um, they have this little pod. Ugh. They can actually bolt onto the side of a bike. <laughs> Might be fun. No, uh, thanks. I'll I run w- on the back. I wouldn't get in one of those. It seems dangerous, right? It, it just no control. You're just yeah. You're out there exposed. Yeah. I wouldn't do it. Well, um, we talked about how y'all got up here. We had actually a pretty great weekend. Uh, we told y'all last week we alluded to that we were going to be at the Bourbon Festival, mm-hmm. and we went, and it was nothing short of fun. Fun. It was a really great time, very educational. Um, got to listen to some pretty cool music and uh, just hang out with a bunch of people. It was kind of nice being the second time around. Uh, Vince and I we, and, and Melissa and Eric, we, we ran into people that we actually met previous years. Yeah. That was so weird. That was pretty cool. We were like chilling in the t- in the I was gonna say the tub, chilling in the pool, and it was one of those like uh, modern pools where they have like a really shallow. It's not a kids' pool. It's just a shallow like lounging area. Yes. Like you can kind of like lay in it, and you'll be mostly covered with water, but not all the way. It it almost makes you think of um, you ever seen those uh, hotels that have the like the little swoopy chairs that you can sit in where you're like. Half of you in the water, half of like you out. Like a lounger. Like a yeah. lounger. Like it, it should have those, and maybe they just haven't come in yet kind of thing. Because it's a it's a nice, flat, huge, shallow area. Easily fit four of those chairs. Oh, easily. And uh, we were just sitting over there in a corner waiting for the sun to go down because it was baking us. Um, and the wa- it's a heated pool, so it's not super refreshing. It's nice, but it's not super refreshing. So we're waiting for the sun to go down. And this guy just rolls up, and he's like... Hey, how y'all doing? I haven't seen y'all since last year. I'm glad to see you. And Melissa immediately, you picked up on it right away. I'm oh, like, yeah. I'm like, who are you? Yeah. Like it took me a little while to remember him. It was Dan the Bourbon Man. Yeah. It it took me a hot minute to remember him, mm-hmm. and then he just picked up on everything. And then I think it was when you said the charity because he he uh, he runs a a charity, mm-hmm. um, that's uh sponsored by a bunch of bourbon enthusiasts, and uh. That's when I was like, that's right. There was the guy here last year with the, the charity thing. But yep. um, this was fun. It's a good time. The weather held out. Yep. You know, because when yeah, we, we first started planning, like earlier in the week, what are we all packing? You know, just bringing snacks, it, et cetera. It was 
don't forget your rain gear. Don't forget the umbrellas. And so, yeah. What were you gonna say, Vince? Go ahead. I was gonna say it was forecast to rain all weekend. Yeah. And Half an all inch. we got was fr- Friday morning a little bit before we yep. got out. Yep. Half an inch of rain each day. That's a lot of rain. And we got none. Nothing but sunshine. Yeah. yeah. And hot. Yeah. Hot. Oh, yeah, it was a fun time. Boy, Friday was muggy though. That rain had come in. Yeah, that was. sun come out. It was like back to South Louisiana. Just remember that South Florida heat where it rains and then the sun just bakes that rain, Jerry, and it oh, just yeah. it just it's thick. You know, it's just it was brutal that first There's day. There's a portion we, of the festival that's more under shaded trees, and I'm always looking for it. Can we go that way? Like even if we've already <laughs> been there, can we go over there? Just yeah. the, like the trees created a breeze and it was shadier and. Uh, always cooler on that side. Yeah, we felt really bad. They actually moved um, the craft craft the vendors. Craft vendors, yeah. craft the craft vendors. vendors. You know your 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 genuinely genuine leather um, wallets and your soaps and candles. soaps and candles and beard wax and um, cool. Um, obviously, it's Bourbon Fest, so your cool like spirits, bourbon jellies, bourbon jellies, your bourbon bourbon barrel aged maple syrup. Come on, somebody. I know. I mean, it was good. It was I so good. That. Oh, wow. <coughs> that dude was, did you see him, like, walking around? Um, he had his little, like, one of those little foldable carts. The wagon. That's what we tried. Yeah. yeah. That's and he we had, had the sample. He had the little thing, and he's like, you want to try it? And we're like, sure. You know? Oh, it was so good. And I was like, where can I buy it? And he's like, if you got cash here, if you don't, they got a booth over at the other part or whatever. But they put them in such a weird spot. A, it was hotter than... I mean, like, it was bad. It I was, couldn't think of a good analogy there. There was no shade. It was they brutally were hot. It was in a parking lot. Yeah, yeah. It was a parking, parking lot. Yeah. No shade. Brutally hot. Even under the tent, so you just feel the heat radiating off of everything. And then, um, so nobody wanted to go over there. Nobody. And it was far enough removed that, like, it wasn't even inclusive. It almost, mostly you had said that they could actually have, like, moved the entrance barely any. And then made all that for the whole community could have gone and 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 gotten um, been they could have opened su- it to the public yeah, and support it too because they were right on the main thoroughfare of town. That's true. That's so the point. main people could have done yeah. it. so they could have moved the entrance, just built another fence right sure. on the grass line, and put that's where it was last year and put the entrance because the food vendors were actually there last where year. the crafters were and they were open to the public just like they were this year, even though they moved them to the street. I so. still think what we talked about, they could have put those vendors, intermixed them, or intermingled them. They're, they're with small, the tents. Little, they were a little. Six foot by. Then people would have seen it, would have bought yeah. it, would have, you know. Yep. yep. And last year, that's what it was. Last year, it was actually in a very shaded um, tree area, and there were constantly people walking through yep. that area, buying stuff left and right. Yep. I bet they complained. Oh, I bet you they do, too. I would I would have. Yeah. yeah. You or wa- I'm not coming back. You see a handful of people. Yeah. Thousands of people walking over here. And a handful of people over at the... Uh, I saw their statistics. 15,000 people over the three days. Wow. The I believe it. Yeah. I believe and it. 60 vendors, I think it was. 60 distillers. Yes. And over, I think it was 350 expressions of bourbon. So different types of bourbon you could yeah. drink or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, cool thing. I mean, like, everybody gets a little um, small glass. And then you go up and you, you taste them. And they... It's not just like here. Let me take a chug of whiskey. Um, they actually, it's a. They're giving you quarter ounce. It's very little. If it's that. it is enough to taste, and that's it. Um, but then they're also explaining what they do, how they're different than everybody else there. Because if there's 60 people there making the same exact product, how are they different? Why does it taste different? And can you go through and hear all their explanations? Some of the places we liked a lot. They gave us their information on where to go visit their distillery and actually see it in action. Some people were doing some really cool stuff with technology where there's one uh, brand new whiskey um, distillery. Well, I guess not whiskey. It might be all spirits, but a brand new distillery where it's completely automated and it's literally just one guy sits in a computer uh, like a control room, right. Homer Simpson style, yep. and runs the whole plant. And that's it's completely automated. And they said something like 1,500 sensors are, are points along the way that actually guide the whole process and it's fascinating stuff that because making whiskey is a very labor intense process yeah. and so it's kind of cool to see that that what they're doing 
Uh, also a little scary because I don't want people to lose jobs. I don't want this to adopt too oh, much. Oh, sure, just automation. Um, yeah. But it's still neat to see what they're doing. There's another company that was talking about ways they figured out how to do what was it called rapid maturation? Rapid. Yes, rapid maturation. Rapid maturation. It never works. They got some work to do. It's uh, <laughs> well, there, there have been a few pl- places that have tried that. There's one here locally in Ohio, Cleveland Distillery. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do rapid maturation. Um, I want to say with sound waves. Uh, I couldn't have you had that wrong, but um, there are a few that have tried different ways of rapidly maturing whiskey. Elevator music. No, <laughs> that, that but you do get that, that, that with um, <laughs> with uh, another brand that's owned by a popular rock group. Um, that they they blast their me- yeah. their me- their whiskey mm. in the barrels with their music. It works yeah. for chickens. Does it? Yeah, chickens. I mean, depending on what kind of music you play, yeah, chickens produce more eggs, there better. You yeah, they, yeah. Wow. Music, music. Yeah. I don't know if it's working for the bourbon. I doubt it worked. No, it, what, <laughs> what we tasted, what we tasted there, tasted very thin. Yes, it, very, was, it, it, it was, was. Obviously, it was only animals. three to six months yeah. old. Yeah. Experimental phase. Yeah, but it's still absolutely. <laughs> there were a lot of experimental phases. Yes, and it's still fun to see people try and people do things. We had one. It was a corn whiskey. Tasted like buttered popcorn. Oh yeah, that buttered was really good. Popcorn, really good at the movie theater. Yeah. And I'm like, this is unbelievable. Actually, you know what it really tastes like? Um, have you ever had? Are y'all Jelly Belly people? Do y'all like Jelly Beans? Jelly Belly yes. in particular? Do you remember they used to have one? Or they used to have one called buttered popcorn? Yes. It tasted just like that. Just like a Jelly Belly butter popcorn. And I'm like, all they, literally, all they're using is corn and a little bit of um, water. No, what's the yeast? Yeast rye too. Uh, Sugar. Malted rye. Just a. I think it was. I think it was like 95.5. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. I think it was 95. percent well, That's just 95 percent corn, five percent malted rye. And it tastes like butter popcorn. But what, like, ma- what what makes it corn whiskey and not bourbon is that it's it was this this was aged in a Used, used barrel. barrel used it wasn't barrel. a brand new air barrel. It was a used barrel, so it couldn't be called bourbon. And it wasn't the n- an amount of time necessary. Right. It looked really yellow. It looked like they were pouring butter out. It, it did. was. It really did. Bananas. Yeah. Um, but that was a great time. Enjoyed it. Stayed at that usual hotel. If you're in Bardstown, Bardstown Motor Lodge. It's a great hotel. It's reasonably priced. Uh, they have a great pool. Um, it's super convenient. There's zero truck parking. Do not attempt it. Uh, but that's in Bardstown in general. They're very not. Super truck friendly. It's it's old school Americana. Sure. Um, but yeah, I had a great time. I was so glad uh, Kelly and Jimmy were able to make it up there. It was kind of iffy for a few minutes, but uh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun hanging out. Yeah, we had a good time. You, you know, we we get together and we work hard, and and it's nice to be able to break away sometimes and enjoy each other's company. Yeah, we had a good time. Yeah, it was fun. So uh, what we've been doing, uh, Kelly and Jimmy, on this podcast is. Over the past several weeks, we've been going and doing um, a history of Highfield. Uh, people want to know kind of a little more about us, our history, our heritage, where we come from, uh, chicken or the egg, etc. We started out by doing our first six months, then we did our first year, second year, yada, yada. And uh, it's been kind of fun because we've explored the whole Patrick and Eric as and Highfield starting up as independent contractors who run for a fleet owner to we buy our first truck, we're owner operators to... We've started a small fleet, and we're at five trucks, I think it is. Um, we just bought D8803. We just bought... A baby carrying the equipment for 38 Special. 38 Special. In Hiawassee, that truck oh, yeah, still... Right. Now it carries rock equipment yeah. for yeah. 38 a lot of, Special. A lot of options for these reefer <laughs> wow. trucks. Yeah. So we buy D8803. Uh, which is our first brand new truck. And then immediately after we buy D8814, which is Old Blue. Blue is a great truck, dry van. You saw the pictures from it last week um, and why we call it Old Blue. If you didn't see it, go check it out. It's interesting. Um, and then we get on a little kick, and we you know, buy a reefer truck here. A few months later down the road, we buy it. It's uh, identical twin trucks. We had two matching trucks. And we're thinking at that time, like, that's what we're going to do. We're going to have identical trucks we're gonna have nothing but exactly the same oh. that way it's gonna make maintenance easy it's we're gonna have you sure. know it's gonna keep our fleet consistent how that right? work out for you all great ideas <laughs> so uh those are the only two trucks we bought that were identical <laughs> of that series uh, but that's because we had a new great idea 
we were going to put uh, buy a couple bathroom trucks to reward top grossing, top producing teams, right? You do really, really well. We're going to get you in a bathroom truck. Now, at the time, FedEx had no load board, and there was a classification of trucks called a Super C. So with FedEx, a C unit is a 12-foot box. That means you have 12 feet of usable space. Uh, that means you can haul on a reefer three pallets because their pallet is typically four foot by four foot. So it's three pallets. And then on a, on a C unit uh, dry van, you could put... Uh, six pallets in there because you could do three side by side because you don't have that insulation of the walls. Right. You don't have that thickness. You're actually able to... Wider inside. Exactly wider inside. You're able to put uh, two pallets side by side, but you can't do that on a reefer truck. Uh, not with a 4x4 four four standard pallet. Um, and then it has to be able to hold, I think at the time, 5,000 pounds. Well, we found out from people and places and things that the 5,000 pound rule... It was flexible, right, Jerry? Yeah. It was very flexible. <laughs> very. Very flexible. Uh, we At that time, there people were building trucks that could haul like 25, 2,800 pounds. Very, very heavy trucks that could barely haul any weight, and FedEx was letting it fly. But we didn't want to do that. We wanted to have a Super C. So a Super C was they would take um, that same minimum criteria and put a third axle on it. So you'd still have a small box, but you could hold a ton of weight. And that worked out really nice for us. So we put not 12-foot boxes, but we put 16-foot boxes on these trucks. And then we put 120-inch custom sleepers. And when I say custom sleepers, I mean I went down to AA custom truck in uh, Fort, uh, Fort Worth, Texas, and sat down with them, designed these things uh, with uh, – their people. And the first one was very traditional. Um, bathroom in the far left corner, right behind the driver's seat. Big kitchen on the behind the passenger seat wall. Um, and the typical dining bunk in the back. And then the uh, refrigerator was underneath the cabinet, underneath the, the countertops. And then uh, there's a big closet behind the, uh, the bathroom. Those trucks were super... It was a really nice truck. The bathroom was quite large. It was very spacious. It was super comfortable. It was a good design. Um, then the second truck I was going to build, uh, I approached that original team we've talked about now a, a couple different episodes where we've had them in different trucks, right? They're doing great. They're killing it. They're killing it. They're doing a wonderful job. So I'm like, I'm going to make you a custom truck. What do you want? Uh, I showed her what we were doing for the first truck, and she was like, that won't work. And we're like, What? <laughs> like, like, she literally said she'd just stay in her old truck. And I'm like, how are you going to turn out a bathroom and all this? Not, like, what's going on? So she told me her truck, if you remember, the bed was on the side. So she essentially had six or seven feet of countertop space. And she cooked in that truck every single meal they had. They never ate out. Um, and so she was like, I cannot afford to lose that space. So I'm like... Okay, let me put my thinking hat on. Um, I'd seen uh, Bolt Custom Trucks had actually built some 150-inch sleeper trucks, massive, gigantic trucks that we never would own, or would be. Uh, their, their toilet in their, in their bathroom, and this is weird, um, it had the ability to pivot 90 degrees, so you could kind of face it any direction you needed. And I was like, huh. So I actually found a picture of that on the Internet, Go down to Texas. I talked to uh, Wayne, who was running AA at the time, and I showed him this picture, and then I threw him a, a, a floor plan of a truck that I had drawn out on graph paper, because I'm so technically savvy. It's not surprising. And uh, <laughs> I said, can we do this? What we did is we, when you walk uh, into the sleeper behind the driver's seat, it was counter space from directly behind the seat to about – eight feet in or so. Um, and then the last two feet, I guess uh, seven and a half feet, the last two and a half feet was actually a bathroom. So where the shower or the, like the uh, shower, if you were standing in it, you would be facing the front of the truck. You would now be facing sideways. Like you're facing the, be uh, the, the passenger side wall. It's kind of a unique floor plan. Then if you look, the bed is obviously on the side 
where it traditionally would be in the refrigerator uh, is in front of the bed. So it actually made like this very spacious, super comfortable sleeper. Um, that was my first time really getting super creative uh, because this wasn't just a let me just copy what people have done before. Let me let's see if we can innovate and and fit this kind of complicated um, order up. And one thing that had been requested of us too was she wanted the up and down refrigerator. She she had a bad back, didn't want to uh, go underneath the uh, counter for the refrigerator. Had to have the up and down refrigerator. So did that. It came out awesome. It was really cool. Was she happy? She was super happy. We did white cabinets in there, so it's bright and airy. We did uh, light light fabrics or light vinyls rather. It came out really really nice. Back then we were putting own generators in the trucks, and uh, again, super nice truck. They drove great going down the road. They were actually 38, like 38 and a half feet long. They weren't quite as long as our full-size trucks are. Um, so they just handled a little better. Like it was a, it was a really cool setup we had on those. And uh, I thought that's what the future of our industry was going to be. But FedEx started rumoring that they were changing the dispatch system a little bit. And some of the early information we had was that, hey, these changes are coming and you really need to have D units. We didn't necessarily know why or what was going on, but we knew we needed to make some changes going forward. Uh, in 2016, we had decided we didn't really like the way the dry freight was going at FedEx. So we were debating, should we go to Panther or should we with a dry van or should we rebuild this truck as a reefer? And we did the stupidest thing you can do, which is we rebuilt that truck as a reefer. Oh. In hindsight, I was scared of what I didn't know, so we didn't go to Panther, but that was should a stupid we stay decision. Or should we go? Exactly. So we rebuilt that truck as a reefer unit, and we uh, had these other reefer trucks in the fleet, and everything's moving great. And that's when uh, we finally got to meet um, Kelly and Jimmy. And they come on the scene in late 2016. And we were so happy they were here with us. Everything went flawless. Uh, they moved right into a truck. False. Exactly what we said it was going to be. And there were no hiccups or any kind of issues of any kind, right? False. False. A little bit. Muy poquito. You just got a few feet. You okay. got a few. You got a few details. Well, you there, you you, you it, tell me. It. You tell me what you remember. I'm just kidding. No, seriously. I think we figured it at the time. We were your ninth truck. I thought it was seventh. <coughs> seventh or ninth i don't know we'll have to get yeah. that fact checked yeah um but i think seventh or ninth and honestly i have to find out where jackie was because that's how we found well i can say y'all were in the uh our, our frank was in um 8803 and then he got the first bathroom truck he did and then jackie and mike got into 8803 yes. they did yep. and, and so that is how i found you because yes. Jackie and Mike, we met them when we drove for Covenant. And Jackie and Mike, just so you know, they're millennials in trucking. Um, yep. If you're interested in seeing what uh, some people who are, you know, young and creative in the industry, and she's a kind of a trendsetter and likes to disrupt things, um, <laughs> check her out. I, we love what they're doing. They're awesome. It, they're, they're awesome absolutely people. Awesome. Um, and, you know, they, they do the same thing we do. Just differently. Um, and, uh, Mike and Jackie are young enough to be our children. And they definitely were yes. when we met them. Jackie was yeah. actually yes. 21 years old. When we met them. And I think Mike was 23. Yeah. And she wow. had just, at the time, you had to be 21 to get a CDL. Do you still? You still yes. have to be 21. To, to go 20, so, in, yeah. interstate. So you can, you can get your CDL. Class a. You can get your CDL younger. You just can't leave the state. So she went to gotcha. Italy, Florida. Or I guess at the time, Georgia. Yes, it was at the time. And so she was 21, and they both had Class A's because they were driving for Covenant as well. And we met them actually at Covenant. And we drove together Funny story. for a while. Funny story how we met them. You can tell it. Uh, we were at Covenant. Uh, I forgot why we had come back to the yard no, at Covenant didn't. in Chattanooga. You can tell everybody. Was it to get the award of the drivers of the yeah. month? Okay, to get oh. the award of drivers of the month. Nice. <laughs> no, I didn't know that was Team the actual driver reason of the why. Month, by the way, they had so, multiple. Yeah, for uh, the second time in that year. And anyway, so we're walking down the hallway at Covenant, and in the hallway, long hallway, they have pictures up of everybody. You know, they have the uh, solo driver of the month, team drivers of the month, yada yada. And so we're walking down the hall, and there's this girl and uh, a guy standing there, and all of a sudden she steps out in the middle of the hall and says, "Hey, is that you?" And points to us and points she to the picture. She probably said a little wall. more colorful. Yeah. Probably. And if you yeah. know Jackie, you'll understand. Yes, she yes. probably said a little more colorful. 
And so uh, we said, yeah, that, that is us. And so immediate friendship, they literally changed uh, phone numbers right there. Yeah. And without knowing that anything about any kind of mentor or mentor program, we actually mentored them because they were friends and we were wanted to help them. They were brand new, young. We had been established. We figured out how to make money doing this. Uh, at Covenant. At Covenant. Yes, yes at Covenant. At, at Covenant. And, and so, yeah, and so immediate friendship formed, and we kind of helped them out along the way and saw each other on the road. You know how it is. You run into somebody at a truck stop. Mm -hmm. We'd hang out. Dogs would run together, eat together, whatever. And, um, <laughs> yeah, and that that went on for, I don't know, what, maybe uh, well, we, a year Well, we so? drove there for a couple, two and a half years. Yeah. But then Jackie and I were friends on Snapchat. <laughs> Well, you had you had you had said you were only going to do it for next X two years. years, right? You had goals, and uh, well, that yes, was your, yeah. and I would have, and I did, I did leave, I did get off the truck, and my nephew ran with Jimmy for about six months until Jackie Snapchat. So one day I'm looking at Snapchat, and I look at Jackie's story, and she's got this custom sleeper, which we'd seen going down the road yeah. in a tractor trailer a bunch of times. Been, you know, it was that, a FedEx if I was ever, critical truck. I literally made jokes and used to say, if I'm ever going to do this long term, that's what I'm talking about right there kind of thing. But it's a passing it. joke. Yeah. So I see on her Snapchat that she's got a picture of one of those FedEx custom critical trucks. What are you doing? So they had just left. She's, man, we're going to drive this right now. She says, these guys are great. You should, you should reach out. You should reach out. They have another open truck. Patrick and Eric. So she texts me Patrick's number. We had just gotten a, uh, another reefer truck back. You did. And so I called Patrick just out of the blue because at the time, no recruiting, no nothing. It was Pat They were still on truck, actually, yeah, we still driving drove. Yeah. for a while, actually. We Pat drove till 17. We, yeah. we drove for a few years for, together. Yeah. Patrick was recruiting and maintenance. Yeah, at the right. Time. I was. Yes. So I called up and. I was off the road at the time, and I told him. And at, even at that point, I'm pretty sure I said to Patrick, because you asked me how long. You said a year. I said two. Or two years. Was so it, I'll give you one two, or two years. years. Yep. I said, I can promise you two years. I won't leave before that because I knew, you know, it was a big deal to do that and commit a course. That lasted way longer than that. But um, so then we ended up in that truck. And, of course, we did drive Old Blue that you yeah, so to things the dry were, band. So things, okay, so I got to back up and just say real quick. But my don't little, make excuses. My little Mike and Jackie plug, um, <clears> they <throat> were, back to their age, they were so young that when it was time to, for them to get the truck, Eric and I talked to them about, like, can you rent a car and, and bring it to us or whatever, and, and then, we get, then you'll be able to move the truck and everything. And we were going to meet them in Memphis or something. <laughs> and she was like, um, we tried. She and <laughs> because they weren't 25 years old, they couldn't rent a car. Oh, my and goodness. And so they were like, if y'all rent a car, we'll pay for it. Uh, are you taking over a settlement or whatever if you can bring us a truck? And it's, it's like a reverse way of doing it. But I was like, okay, that might – I don't mm, – that's kind of weird, but let's see what happens. So what ended up happening is Eric and I were able to go home, grab our personal vehicle, and then we just drove both vehicles up there, dropped them off and uh, at their house uh, – but way back in the day, dropping trucks off of people's houses. Yeah, you did us too. Yeah, that's you did me too. Twice. It's uh, it's been uh, yeah, it's been a long time. I had yeah, you had to yeah. meet me at Panther. Sorry, you I didn't had to meet get you that. Panther. I'm like, you, you didn't come that. to Oregon. No, I didn't no. come to well, Oregon. We also used then to do in you person. Then you had to take me to the rental place. place. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? Yeah, different treatment. Uh, yeah. but no, we uh, so we brought the the truck down to him, and here's why I didn't meet you in Oregon. We get there, and we literally think it's going to be, uh, here's the keys. Let me show you around the truck, and then we go. We get there. A, the Covenant truck is still there, and I'm like, oh, well, that's not a good sign. Oh, my, oh, oh, Mike, Jackie, oh Mike, yeah, Mike Jackie. Yes. I'm like, okay, well, this is not a good <laughs> sign. And then um, she's like, y'all, come inside. We're about to have breakfast. And I'm like, well, this is they weird. Don't like, I, they don't know cat. me. Many, yeah, I'm like, I don't know about all this. So we go inside. She cooks us omelets, made to order. What what ingredients do you want? The whole nine yards. We ended up having, we spent hours hanging out with them. And then uh, Eric and I finally left and, and had a pretty good uh, pretty good laugh on the way home with some of the conversation we'd had with Jackie. Because, you know, if you get a chance, again, Melina's in trucking, and she does a lot of writing, uh, staff writing with um, Expeditors Express Online. On women's in truck, uh, women in trucking. She too, works right? with women in trucking as well. And, uh, she does some stuff with Expedar Services too. She's kind of all over the place, uh, and uh, she's just a firecracker. Like Agreed. that's an understatement. All all I over the Jackie. place. Um, and so it was so cool to kind of like again. I think I had a good feeling about them, but still some of the stuff she said made me laugh. Um, so when she said she referred me, did you have a good feeling then, or were you worried? 
So by the time she had <laughs> referred you, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to expect. And, and then I didn't even get to meet you. No, you didn't. Eric, so, did. Eric brought the truck. So we uh, we do go back. And again, a few a little while later, y'all get involved. And, and you're going to come over. So we do the application, all that stuff. And y'all end up going to class with another set of drivers. And I think it was there you discovered that we mistakenly gave. No, I didn't discover that for a long time. A oh, the truth didn't come we were about sitting at a Petro uh, uh, or a TA Iron oh. skillet with. Uh, it with wasn't them. until we met them. We met them that we the found out that there was we some... made the connection between what happened to our truck and why we had to wait three weeks to get one. Okay, so this was a mistake. <laughs> we're just just the way it is. Time. Oh, and uh, it's coming out many years later. I know, right? Here comes so, the truth. So, appa- and I don't remember this. <laughs> They were much much closer than I do. But apparently there was a uh, we had the drive van and we had the reefer going going up and someone else uh, recommended a friend of theirs who was already with Custom Critical and they were in a bad already had experience. Already had experience. They had a bad experience with the fleet owner they were with and were ready to move on and, and needed a truck to move into. So we moved them from a reefer truck into a reefer truck and then y'all unfortunately got a drive van. But y'all killed it in the dry van, in man. December. It was in December. They were in that truck for a couple of weeks, and I, and I told Eric, I'm like, well, they're getting the next reefer. I mean, it was one of those like immediate, like, oh, they're killing it, just right. killing it. Uh, I, you gave me my first really big scare, fear, whatever you want to call it, I of remember. the company. I remember Frank had to call me and talk to me about it. Was this Colorado? Yes. Yes. Monarch Pass. Yes, so I get a I get a message from them <laughs> about <laughs> something about chaining up. You, I don't remember how I found out. I, I think, think Frank, there was. No, I talked to Frank, and I think Frank told you, and then you told Frank to call me back. And yeah, I think yeah. I've been it. I was freaking out. I'm like, we don't chain up in our company. So like when we tell people all the time, like you don't have to chain up. It's not a requirement. You do what's safe. Not lying. These people tell me they're chaining up their truck. To go Young. across this crazy, dangerous pass. We had a load to, to go deliver, to Aspen, man. We had to make you, some money. Aspen, he also right? grew up in Colorado Monarch. Springs in Wisconsin. Oh, Monarch, okay. That changes things. Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. I knew nothing about y'all. I hadn't even met you at that yeah. point. Yeah, Eric true. had only delivered your trucks to you. Yeah. So I'm like in pure panic mode. and uh, All is well. Yeah, I mean, cha- Frank. Yeah, Frank. Th- yeah. That's one of those Frank's talking me off a ledge. Yeah. I, well, he Frank did that called a few me. times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I tell the conversation? Frank called me. Yes. Yes, and he said, and I said, well, you know, he told me we don't chain up. There, it's there. If it's bad enough to chain up, just shut it down. I'm like, listen, I grew up in Colorado and Wisconsin. I mean, we used to mess around in the snow. I have yeah. no problem chaining up. Did it all the time. So from that point, it was like I was good to go. But yeah. Yeah, I thought I was in trouble, but it worked out. Well, and we had like again the the first team we had come up working with us, Stephen and Bam. They uh, were out of West, out of West Salt, Jordan, Utah. Yes, Salt West Jordan, City. Salt Lake City. Uh, and so you chain up there all the time. It's just second nature to you. You just do it all the time. So uh, and they drove school buses, so they definitely had to chain up and all that stuff. Wow. Um, so when they did some chaining up, I didn't think anything of it because I knew their background history. I knew nothing about y'all. You're from right. the mountains of Georgia. Right. What do you know about chaining up? So. That kind of freaked me out, but yeah, that was. Uh, Trust me, the girl from Florida didn't know, but she's married <laughs> to a man who did. Vince, Vince, and I did it once. We we team rocked it. He'd, on, he'd only done it one time on a bobtail in a yard in summer. Oh, but see, y'all would be the <laughs> y'all would be the team I wouldn't worry about. Are you serious? <laughs> Coming from Oregon. Coming from Oregon, <laughs> I'm like, well, if you drove in Oregon, and then I know you drove those mountain passes in California and yeah. such. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. well, you probably know how to chain, but I, I started my career. In the winter, in February, in Oregon. Let me tell you how Eric and I learned how to chain. We went out to um, Washington, and we got to Snoqualmie. Snoqualmie. Yep. Oh. Snoqualmie and on the backside of Snoqualmie is a Flying J. Mm-hmm. And we pulled in there, and we waited out the, the, the chain laws, and then we drove. That's how we <laughs> learned to chain. We learned... Don't. Don't. <laughs> don't get me wrong. We waited it I mean, out lots of times. It's and, and not you know the what? Yes. Have, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they, we didn't even chain that many times. It, it wasn't worth it. You know, it, it wasn't times. really worth it because no. when you yeah. do it, you're out in the snow and you only have a certain time frame to do it or you get a yeah, DOT it's violation. It's like, you know, just shut it down. Yeah. And you don't I go- can count on one finger. No <laughs> <laughs> well, and you don't go fast with chaining either. No, like, people don't. don't realize you're going 20 miles an hour. Yeah. 
And it's ridiculous. It was for eight miles or something. It was it was over yeah. Vail Pass. Yeah. And uh, and I I we did it. We managed it. He gets in, and I'm like, I have warm clothes for you that are dry. He's like, I only have to go eight miles. Yeah. I'm He's like, like, I'm not changing. And then changing. these have to come off. And then off. take them off. <laughs> yeah, I'm not changing. I'll wait. Just turn the heat on real off. high right yeah. now. Yeah. 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 I'll fall out, then get out and do it again. That was one and only time we did it. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, the thing for me is, like, they're so dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. If sure. you're not careful, 100%. if you try to go too sure. fast, um, you're still – if the snowpack's not right. You know what I mean? Like, it – Chains do nothing for ice, so they only work if you have snowpack. Is if you as soon as you lose that snowpack, your chains lose traction. You know, think about it, ice skates are just metal blades yeah. Yeah. sliding on on ice, yeah. which is all your chains are at that point. So well, then if you don't get I, them snug, I mean, those they can fly, fly off, off so easy, it, it or if they break the underneath, all of that. Yeah, yep. yeah. There's there's just a lot of that goes with it. We put the chains in the truck because by law we're required to have them on the truck during Colorado uh, during certain months of the year, which is in effect now, um, and that's Six. it. I don't ever require anybody to do it. There pro- might be some time where you have to to get yourself out of a bad situation, but outside of that, I don't ever expect people to. So when and you do that, do I you know who's Honestly, a rock star so. on those? Uh, your right hand woman there, Kayla Bender in Fleet Support for Panther. She always was throwing chains. Just her. Oh, that's because she grew up in Idaho. Uh, I know. Yeah. She, was always <laughs> she had to throw chains. chains to go to college. I mean, you know what I mean? She had to throw chains to get out yep. to the pig farm. She had to throw chains to get to. She was always doing it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's funny, too. I mean, like, you talk to these ice road trucker people and all, and it's like, what do you mean? It's like nothing. It's like no big deal. It's like yeah. fueling. No. Part you of just the job. do it. Yeah. Part yeah. Of the job. And I'm from South Louisiana. I already told y'all a couple of weeks ago, I gelled up a truck because I didn't know diesel turned to freaking wax when it got cold enough. So it was definitely not for me. Um, even now, up in here in Ohio, if it gets really bad, if we have really, really bad snowy days, uh, we talk to ops and we talk to um, recruiting and let everybody know there's going to be a day or two hold. We're not driving this crap. We're not risking our lives because it's not just us. It's the other people on the road, oh, too. Yeah. Like, you can do everything right chaining and have some idiot hit you. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, Jerry, um, did you ever chain? Um, Jerry had auto chains. I was about to say, every truck I ever drove before Highfield had auto chains. So my chaining was flipping a switch on the dash and going. Imagine my disappointment when I watched a Jerry video mm-hmm. and uh, before we came on board. And he's running auto chains. And I didn't know there was a difference, a, 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 a carrier, of a, a fleet change at that. I thought it was Highfield. And we get here and we don't have auto chains. <laughs> I was ready to walk. <laughs> oh, so... <sighs> <laughs> they got me out of so many sticky situations, like, and it was amazing to just flip a switch. They come down, they gauge, I go. Whenever I'm done, flip the switch, carry on down the road. Yeah, they are nice. I know nothing about them. Never. I see them at the shows all the time. There's always the booth there, and they got the little thing swinging and showing you what they do. Yeah. The same as those socks things. Now, those look pretty doggone easy, if you're asking me. Now, yeah. I don't think they look. We bought a fraction them. as effective as a chain. So, I, but obviously, there's something to them. I, I, I don't know the legality of them. I think they're, f- f- mm, I don't even want to say. I don't know if they're legal for I the law. I think they're legal, but maybe they're not. Auto socks? If it's a yeah. Cert- yeah. I but auto, auto socks say they're legal in all yes, 48 states. Absolutely. But uh, on their website, they actually link to the state. What about, what about Canada? Canada was a question about whether they were legal in a British Columbia part. or something. One, one province, I think it's British province. Columbia. Yeah. yeah. So you there, still carry both. It, yeah, there was some weirdness, and so that's why we always took the uh, the road of we're going to put chains on your truck. If you want to buy auto socks and sure. have them on your truck, I'm not going to stop you. But if you get a ticket, it's your ticket. You know what I mean? Like. I, I'm not going to sure. support. Like it, it's yeah. it's it's up to you if you want to use it or not. Yeah. I'm not going to I'm not going to tell you one way or the other. Um, and so that's and a lot of our teams did. A lot of our teams bought auto socks. Um, and I've, I've seen that be a popular thing people grow towards. Yeah. But here's what I don't like about auto socks. In the th- the main reason I don't buy and and utilize auto chains. And does anybody want to answer that for me? Maintenance. No. You mean auto socks? Uh, no, the the chains. Oh, the uh, okay. auto chains. You know why? It makes people brave. Mm. Yeah. It I makes it makes yeah. it easy 
and make bad decisions. That's a good idea. And so that's it's not process. worth the risk. Let's just not do it. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Because if you're, over. yeah, if you're a novice driver sure. and you're like, all I got to do is flip this switch and drive over this yeah. pass and I'll be and fine. Everything will be fine, right. It's yeah. not and necessarily the case. maintain the same speed. I've been maintaining and not understand yes, exactly right. what it means to have chains on the so, track. I can see that. So it's just like, no, we don't need bravery. Sure. Uh, so we don't we don't equip our trucks with those. And then i got a lot of the fleet owner friends who do put them on their trucks. Sure. We don't. Uh, and I've also talked to other fleet owners who did, and they quit because of that either reason. bravery or maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. So people don't realize, like, those auto chains, they're sitting on an aluminum uh, bracket. You're supposed to take those uh, heads off every year and put them back on every year. Most people don't mm -hmm. do it a few seasons. Yeah. They end up bending. And then when you push the button, they don't go up high enough to make contact with the tire. But you don't know that until you're yeah, they're not doing a darn thing down there. Exactly. You. Until you're in a bad situation. Yeah. So it's just like, yep, we're not going to do it. We're not going to equip them. I, I know that we've bought trucks with auto chains. Yes. And they immediately came off. Yep. Immediately. Yeah. So. It, we've done a few repos that have had them, and they yeah. come off immediately. It's the first thing. Um, as a matter of fact, we're looking at another repo right now um, that we're trying to work out. The logistics on repos are tricky. They, they're not – like if you go to buy a repo truck, it's a multi-month situation. It's not an overnight situation. Um, so we're working on it right now, but it has auto chains on it, and it's literally on the list of if we get this truck. They're coming off. They're coming off. Yeah. Um, and that's an expense we bear. Yep. But again – it's not worth it. If someone not. gets brave, it could forget the price of the truck. It, that's insured. False, I can't yeah. I can't insure your life. No. False so, sense of security. No. Oh yeah. Yeah, very much so. Oh, yeah. So how long were you in the drive van? Not to switch subjects, but it was on my mind. A month. Four month. weeks. Yep. Oh, before So what was happening was while he they realized the error of his ways. Oh. No. While just they kidding. were in while they were in the drive van, <laughs> we'd already started the process of converting that other truck into a reefer. So we knew it was gonna be a temporary I see. thing. Yeah. It um, had a weird little and you could tell it was a retrofit for lack of a better word. Yeah. Because the box had a nifty little notch in it. It was, it was a weird. Out it was that was a strange. Thing. Little so if you remember back, there. clearly you don't. Yeah. Clearly we have avid listeners to the <laughs> avid podcast. Listeners, yes. uh, so two weeks ago we talked about our our first reefer truck with that same reefer notch. Yeah. Uh, and this was the second one we did. Now this one we because we There's were nice building storage area. It, it had a wonderful storage. Amazing area right storage. Yeah, so because really because we were building this thing from scratch. Uh, we actually built the uh, like the uh, we bought a full size like a regular size box and then had Capital City Trailers in Columbus cut it down and actually build that notch. Um, and so because we did that, we actually had them do a full wall. It was insulated and everything. It was yeah, it's full insulated wall. So where that notch came down, if you walked in that truck, you would not know it was a notch reefer mm. because it was a perfectly had that white. Um, Fiberglass material they use inside the trucks. What's it called, Jimmy? It's a uh, you you repair it all the time. It's like a fiber board. There's a word for it because it. I can't. Think it's of common it. for yeah. a forklift to like nudge yeah. it, and we have to patch it all the time. Kim light. Kim light. Kim, Kim, Kim light. Kim light. Kim light. So it had that Kim light on there. It was fully insulated. It was beautiful, and then. We had that extra space, and we're like, "What should we do on with the, it?" On the other side, on the front. On the, side on the, the front box. side, so directly yeah. under the reefer. Behind the sleeper. About, what, four foot tall? About four foot tall, three foot wide, maybe, something no, like that? It was, it was no, way taller than that. It was oh, it, taller oh, than the you box. Oh, you could stand there? Okay. Box. Had a side door. So on the yeah, side on the of the box, outside. you had a side little latch door, and it was might have been three feet. Uh, it, it something could like fit, that. It could fit a large pack of paper towels and a case of water. <laughs> yes. And we and, and, yes. Wide. And we wide. put wow. a, uh, and we put steps there, like some steel steps yeah, was, to get in and out. It was very convenient. Yep. So we we I tried a big old toolbox. We tried to use that space as best we could, and I think we kept. Did we keep our pads and strap our pads in there and our our um, dollies maybe? We didn't. Not it was not, empty. Y'all no, made no, that happen, no, but I think no. we ended up doing there that. There was nothing yes. in it when we got the truck. Yes, I think that's exactly where the pads and the furniture dolly. Now the pallet jack. And pallet jack still, had to be in the back. Still yeah, in the box. Absolutely. Yeah, but yeah. Oh, so know. that was a, that was a really cool truck, man. That was a money maker. We had that thing on for. Approximately ever, that yeah. thing. So at the, towards the end of its life, we that, ended up making we that our best driving forever. truck, best driving <laughs> truck with the least amount of problems I ever drove when I was with. Uh, oh uh, man, Pinky on the steering wheel, is great. Yeah, is great. Up and Love down, that up truck. Up and down, Mon Eagle, fully loaded, like it's nobody's business. Had a double A sleeper on it. Uh, so this was the truck that Eric and I had ran. Uh, it was an M two. Is it yeah. M two? Eric and I had ran this truck. 
um, for a few months, I couldn't get the sleeper cold enough, especially because we were doing a lot of stuff in the desert. There's just freight comes in waves. Sometimes you're in the desert, sometimes you're not. We were in the desert. I couldn't get the sleeper cold enough, so we actually put a curtain up. Did y'all get it after cur- the mm-hmm. curtain was up? Yeah. So you could pull the curtain on just the bed. the bed, and you could make it approximately six, maybe seven degrees cold. It was an extreme custom. So it curtain. had a amazing curtain that went right by the bed, That's then right. a curtain behind the sleeper. Yeah. So you literally could cut the sleeper off, have your little cooking area, and then the bed was covered. Oh, the great thing wow. too was like. If we're driving and it's like, all right, I want a coffee, I could just park the truck, pop back there, do my curry because that other curtain's closed. So I could just do whatever I needed to do, albeit quietly. You try to be respectful to this sure. person. But we had a full-on, um, uh, what are the, those thick curtains called? The um, Blackouts. Blackout curtains up there. So, I mean, it was pretty we effective. We never closed it. Yeah. It Ever. Oh, we, we also it. never yeah. put the bed up. Our bed stayed down the whole time. But we also had dogs in the truck, so... That was their area. Yeah. I, we do have a lot of teams that uh, lift the bed and use the table pretty frequently and cook and stuff. We never we yeah. never put the bed up. Not moving all your eight pillows off oh, well, the bed. Oh, well, right? Your eight yeah. pillows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we had we to. We usually did ours when we were park camped long weekend somewhere, holiday weekend. Yeah. We might have put it up a couple of times when we camped. Yep, but, but that was other it. Other than that, that was it, too. It just wasn't worth it. It was hard. Yeah. We, had to, it was we had to frequently because... We still had to run a business, so we still had to get our laptops out and all that stuff. And I mean, like, you, you could sit in the bed for a few minutes and, like, do something. But I, but if you're going to sit, like, I have to sit somewhere for two hours and knock a spreadsheet out or pay your you do settlements, pay your drivers, you can't do that in bed for two, three hours. You'd kill your back. So it just makes sense. Just go ahead and put the bed up right. and, and all that stuff. So um, that was a cool truck, too. That one also yeah, had the, um, the upper bunk was a false set of cabinets, right? Mm-hmm. So if it was a same household team, the upper bunk could be the mattress could be removed, and there's a piece of wood that could be removed, and it actually turned into a bunch of cabinets, a big cabinet okay. with a bunch with four doors, four or five doors going across. But if it needed to be a same a non same household truck with you know two non related drivers or whatever, then um, you put that wood back in and then put the mattress back in, and it turned into an actual. A good down. size. That's pretty cool. Bunk. Snapped yeah. on the sides. We've yeah. got. I think we've got a few of those we on the Western Stars. Yeah, I was gonna say we've had a couple uh, more like no, that. We've got a couple of double A sleepers that are like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah the double A's. Are, yeah. It's been a the long one with the dark, time. The dark black wood cabinets that we were just talking about yeah. yesterday. It's we don't one convert of them anymore, but we have. I wonder where that truck is now. Yeah. Would you like to know? That would be interesting. We got rid of that thing at six or seven hundred thousand miles. Because uh, towards the end of its life, we actually just kept it as a spare truck in case someone needed something. And we finally got to a point where that truck would break down just as fast as the one the person was moving out of. So it was like, all right, yeah. it's time to let this thing go. Right. But I, I we held on the thing yeah. until it was, until it was cool time. Truck. But it was, yeah. a, it was a great truck. Um, I forgot you were on that. And then y'all left that thing and y'all went to the bathroom truck, right? Sure did. Yeah. Y'all don't even go into a regular a D unit. Y'all went straight from that thing, right? The conversion. Right into a. Um, is that the one you went? We went down to Fort Worth and. Nope. No, was, no, no. This was the this first. Was, this one was another truck that had a sister truck. Yes. It was ninety two forty two. Yeah. And we had a sister truck. That. Yeah. So we did have twin trucks several times. So this one we had, <laughs> this one was four trucks in a row. So all four trucks were the same. The only difference was the generator. Two had Onans and two had Comfort Pros. We stopped using the Onans because of maintenance issues. We kept having repairs that were ridiculous and. Couldn't get people in and out of shops. So you would actually have a situation where people would go into a shop and they'd say, oh, it's an RV generator. Cummins would own in wood. They wouldn't want to work on the APU or they'd work on the generator. So we actually switched over to, to an actual APU shop. That way, okay. or an APU, that way they'd see your truck shop and actually work on your equipment. Although those own are so quiet. They are so quiet. Oh. Yeah, they're, so they're nice. Quiet. Yeah. Especially I wish they were. So much better because they are so quiet. Yeah, I yeah, I hate it too. I don't know. I mean, we for a while there we had a lot of Onans in our fleet at one point, and uh, is the Dynasis as quiet or, or no, quieter than the it's Comfort I think Pro? It's quieter than a Comfort Pro, but I it don't is. think it's near as quiet as an Onan. It's not. Yeah. Onans are dead quiet. Like you walk oh, up yeah, next to them and you're like, yeah, is no, this on? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. A lot of times, if you walk up to a truck that has an Onan and, and you hear like a, a rattle, it is literally 
it's a piece of metal rattling. The cover. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's very rare that it's actually the APU rattling. No, those are great trucks. But, yeah, those four. So that one, uh, I kind of want to save that. I know you won't be here next week for us to talk about it. But that was a unique design that I sat down and, and put together. And I want to talk about how that came out to be. Because it was a design they said couldn't be done. And we did it. And, unfortunately, created a new standard. We did. And, um, it was the standard afterwards. It was. It still is. Uh, yep. So I kind of want to talk about how we got to that. But um, that's another show for next week. Thanks for having us on. Yeah. Um, oh, thank you for being here. I know you didn't want to do it. And Jimmy talked many times about, can we please get out of it somehow? And yeah, well, you know, I think I told you that, you know, Kelly really doesn't like to talk a whole lot. And she doesn't, you know, when you get engaged with her, she doesn't, you know, she kind of shuts down, doesn't really speak and talk and doesn't go on rants or anything like that. So. That's more your job. So it's very good. It's nice to see her out of her comfort zone. Yeah, doing some talking tonight. Well, I'm hoping. Uh, I'm hoping in a few weeks we can have the uh, expedite chicks on. Not a few weeks, actually. It is two mm. months. No, a month, month, month and a smidge. A month, a month and a smidge. smidge. Okay, yeah. Maybe what? we'll have the expedite chicks on. We'll see. What about the sidekicks? Uh, the chicks and their sidekicks. I don't think they're going to make the the date. So uh, I yep. think it's just going to be chicks. I heard you couldn't afford them. Is what it was. No, the chicks will be well, here, no, but no. the sidekicks yeah, you know, won't be can't afford the sidekick. You have a sidekick that won't be here with you, your sidekick. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't know what that means, check out the Expedite Chicks. There you go. Uh, <laughs> they, Selfish plug. They do a wonderful show. They really they promote the industry. They know a lot about Thank what's you. going on. They're way more truck-specific and truck-focused than what we are. They can, they can stand on task, stay on task. Jerry, as much as he tries, can't ring us in. Um, but you know, he hasn't tried very hard. He's just Tonight. sitting, he's just sitting there stewing. He worked hard today. He did work hard today. Sure he, works hard every day. he does. He worked extra hard today. How's That's that? right. That's I, she's not lying. That's she's not lying. I did walk into one of their meetings again. You're here. So you and Don and Jerry we did. are working on a big project together. And I walked in and Jerry's like, so all I got to do is hit this button, right? <laughs> like, that was his whole task. So Don and Jerry, uh, uh, Jerry, I'm sorry, Don and Jimmy, I need to get different names, uh, are, are are for hours agonizing over this. And Jerry walks in, and he's like, we're good? Enter. A little bit of anxiety before the enter. My but. whole life is anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but uh, it's good. Right. It's good to be up here working though with with you guys and to have Don and Jerry over today. I mean, because we you know we work from Georgia and it's like we talk on the phone and the occasional Zoom call and emails, but to actually you know be all around a table and getting things done is kind of neat. I will say it's pretty cool to hear you say you guys are doing the show thing and to think about when we came and to still be sitting here today. That is something that's really cool, and I'm grateful for it. And um, yeah. we well, all had a, it's been a it's been a ride. You've had a great uh, path. Um, it's funny. I know, like while we were down at, at, at KBF, Vince and Melissa and, and, and um, Jimmy and Kelly are talking about the pathway to becoming employees of this company and how that happened. And it's very different stories. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, um, it's just kind of interesting how it all has played out. And, um, you know, it's it's been it's been a lot of fun and uh, a lot of effort. Yeah, a lot of effort. Lot and, of effort. And, and every time we bring someone on or someone new or we change something, it just gets better. Like, yeah. it's amazing how we are just sharpening that knife. And I think. We're not far away from Cutco Sharp. <laughs> no, we're not. We're not. We're getting there. We're like, working on it. It's in the, it's in the privy. I mean, mm -hmm. like, I can see it. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got a lot of things. We've had some staff meetings and, and some meetings over the past week that are, you know, past, past week. Yeah. Some exciting stuff that's coming uh, that I, I just can't wait to see uh, bloom. The thing Melissa was working on today. Uh, I know you're still working on some stuff. Yep. It's so funny. I'm just going to go live tomorrow, though. Is it? Okay. It's so yep. funny when you get a message from Melissa, and she's like, if you see this online, do not touch it. <laughs> do not look at it. <laughs> Step away. Stay in your lane. And it's like. 
Jerry does the same okay. thing. Okay, all right. Well, yeah. we're not Ignore going to uh... those messages that come. <laughs> I'm the only one doing this. <laughs> well, sometimes you're Works testing for me. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You're testing. You got, you got to do those. You those don't have tests. to ask me to stay out of doing stuff. No, no. All the extra. But I can. See, I'm excited to see where that goes too. But we all know we're we all know we're all such team players that if we see something, it's like, oh well, yeah, I can take yeah. care of that real quick. Let me we'll knock help. it out. We'll do it. But that'll screw up your test. Yep. <laughs> so it's like, no, it's 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 really great. I like that we have this uh, this this thing going on, and um, some of these new improvements we're doing are great. A couple things that we have to uh, finesse some more. Uh, and your thing going live tomorrow, so yep. just wheels are moving, things are exciting. I am. Uh, I told y'all when we started this. I said it's going to be exciting fall, yeah, and yeah. things are already starting to happen. That I've got me uh, got me there. So it, it's cool that people get to kind of see and hear the history because oh, it, it's, yeah. it's been it's been ever evolving. I mean, even since yeah. we came on as drivers, she came on staff in March of 2020. I came on March of 2021. And just the ever changing, ever evolving industry and high field. It's just yeah. it's it's been a great ride. It's 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 just been fun. It really has. And and you talked about like ever changing, ever evolving. Like it's so funny. We had a thing today that or actually came up yesterday. We, the question was, why do y'all do it this way? Oh, we do it that way because eight years ago we had this thing happen, and that's not relevant anymore. And we need to change it because we're not that same company eight years ago. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so it was, it's exciting yeah. to see that stuff too. Like we have to go back and revisit some things because right. we're, you know, you, things you do when you were small aren't necessarily things you do when you're big and just trying to dial things in and figure the, the, that part out. That's kind of fun too. And, and we talked in staff meeting today. So every um, week we have a big staff meeting. It's all called, it's an all call video conferencing thing. And we, uh, we talked about it again. Yeah. And and just hashing that out and like following the logic, like it is fun to see how we got where we got or where we are. And and some things it's like are really great and some things are like, mm, well, okay. Let's 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 nip that up real quick. Yeah. Let's uh we're, that's a little different. Let's just, fix it. So just, it's just it's just following that lineage. Yeah. A quick one uh just quick cuz I know we're winding up. Vince and I were truck number what on one Panther when we start, started. On the Panther side? Yeah. Were we I think we were like number four. Number four. Yeah. And roughly how many trucks on the Panther side do we have now? 50. Mm-hmm. And so that's been, for us, I was just trying to put it in, you know, yeah. yep. perspective. It's been fun to watch the Panther side grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it really and, to help has it, been. and to help it grow, you know. And to be a part of the helping mm-hmm. it grow. Even yeah. when yeah. I got on staff, to be quite honest with you, in March of 2020, yeah. I think I had 12 Panther trucks. Yeah. 75 yeah, total, I, I think, it. around 75 trucks. So that total. just shows you the Panther truck, yeah. the Panther fleet has blown, We it blew up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we've had a step, we've had steady growth for the most part on the FedEx side, but even four years ago, Panther was at 12. Yeah. So that's been rapid growth on that side. Yep. And then our tractor program's a year and a half old, and yeah. are really a year old. We have a couple trucks Truth. that are a little yep. bit older than that, but really a year old. Right at it. Watching how that's coming along, and I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. I, I sit back and I go like, I know what's coming down the pipe, so but I can't say everything because you know the corporate sponsors, right? Yeah, <laughs> corporate sponsors. We've had a few so, tonight so. that we've. <laughs> 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 uh, they don't sponsor. We, we pimped everybody yes. tonight. Well, listen oh, here. Sorry, it's Patrick, uh, it's been a wonderful way. ride. We enjoy it so much, and I'm thankful everybody here's uh, a part of that. Um, you each have your own stories. I can't wait to hear more about Jerry, you coming on board and your strife and your excitement and, you know, how you got here and, you know, uh, how we can't get rid of him now. Yes. It's like athlete's foot. No. <laughs> Anyways. Um, but, uh, no, no, I, I say you that with me. You stuck with me. I say that in a <laughs> Amen, brother. most loving fashion. Uh, in the meantime, if you like what you heard and you're like, where can I get more? Uh, check us out. Uh, we're on the Outer Belt Pod, Outer Belt, Outer Belt Podcast everywhere, pretty much. Yep. Um, like and follow us. That's you can, yeah, like and follow us. Uh, check us out on Instagram. You'll see more of these pictures that we've talked about today or on previous shows. If you the thought, hey, you know what? Someone else that I know might enjoy hearing these random people rant for an hour and a half. <laughs> uh, share our show with us. 
Hit a like if you liked us. Hit a downer if you don't like us. Leave us a comment if there's anything you want us to talk about, anything you want us to clarify, converse about. Is there any point in Highfield's history you want to hear more about? Uh, sometimes we have to summarize and skip over some parts, but we're happy to come back and revisit them. Um, if you're interested in driving uh, in this fleet that you're hearing about, you can check us out at highfieldtrucking.com. You can also call us at 833-HIGHFIELD. That's 833-HIGHFIELD, also known as 833-HIGHFIELD. Um Highfieldtrucking.com, during business hours, we always have uh, chat available, and uh, we'd love to meet you, talk with you. Until next week, y'all stay safe and make good decisions. Don't leave money on the table. And keep those wheels a turner. Check Checks out. out. Good night. Bye. Hey, guess what? What? You know what the nosy pepper does? What? Gets jalapeno business. <laughs> <laughs>